Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Mystery Saxon Sarcophagus. During renovations at England's Lincoln Castle in 2013, archaeologists discovered a stone sarcophagus near the ruins of a previously unknown church on the property. They believed the casket contained the remains of somebody terribly important, perhaps a Saxon king or a bishop. When the team opened the sarcophagus, they found a skeleton wearing leather boots. But the only way to have any idea who the person was or when they were buried was to run further tests. Researchers determined the bones belonged to a man who likely died during his 40s, sometime between 1035 and 1070. He suffered from degenerative bone diseases and was probably in considerable pain, according to project manager Mary Powell, who spoke with the BBC. It's unclear whether the team identified the man, but the rare discovery of an undisturbed grave from the little-studied Anglo-Saxon period is nevertheless a valuable find. The research team found many important items at the site, including the limestone sarcophagus and a Roman bronze eagle's wing from the 1st century AD. The treasures will now be a part of a very important exhibition. Forest Inside a Sinkhole Scientists recently announced the discovery of a 630-foot-deep sinkhole with an ancient forest at the bottom in southern China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region. As a size reference, 630 feet is about half the length of the Empire State Building. This area is famous for sinkholes and caves. This particular one is rare because it is very deep, but enough light filters in, which allows the large trees to grow. A team ventured into the hole and immersed themselves in the dense, chest-high vegetation, where they found trees measuring as high as 131 feet tall. That's two and a half times as tall as the Hollywood sign. They also found three entrances to the cave. Sinkholes and caves are formed when rainwater dissolves bedrock, causing it to collapse. It's an environment that's truly untouched by humans and may contain undiscovered species of plants and animals. When a sinkhole is big enough to let in light, it helps plants grow and life continues to flourish. Some have become safe havens for wildlife, lost worlds where people can't reach. The newly discovered forest marks one of the 30 sinkholes scientists have found in the region, which is a designated UNESCO World Heritage Site. Ancient Underground Complex In 2017, Turkish authorities learned of a planned looting in Bajbuk in the country's southern region where a group of criminals discovered an Iron Age complex under someone's home. Luckily, police stopped the looters from putting their plan into action and alerted local archaeologists. They found a 12 by 7 foot opening that had recently been uncovered and went inside to look around. After performing tests, they dated the subterranean complex to the 9th century BC to the Neo-Assyrian period. It consists of an upper and lower galley containing rare artwork on the walls depicting a procession of Assyrian deities, as well as Aramaic writing. Unfortunately, the team could only uncover part of the complex before excavations were put on hold due to the site's instability. In the meantime, it's being protected by Turkey's Culture and Tourism Ministry. They have not yet found the site's original entrance and aren't entirely sure what this structure was used for. Researchers were able to identify three of the gods on the panel, including the god of thunder and storms, Hadad. This led them to believe that the complex possibly functioned as a ritual site for an ancient fertility cult. It's shout out time! I wanted to give a big shout out to Raygor Lamont and Bibi. Thanks so much for supporting this channel. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos about amazing discoveries. Leprosy in the Caribbean The small island of Petite Moustique in the Caribbean may have been home to an early 19th century leper colony. This uninhabited island measures just 100 acres. It's part of the group of islands collectively known as St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The island has lots of hills and there are no easy boat landing areas or large beaches, so it wasn't great for a permanent settlement. But people have passed through there, as archaeologists learned in 2003, when they found a human skull on Petite Moustique. Experts recently dated it to sometime during the late 18th or early 19th century. They discovered cranial deformities that are consistent with leprosy. It's the earliest known solid evidence of the disease in the Americas, and one of just a handful of examples of leprosy being identified on a skeleton in the Western Hemisphere. It made sense back in the day to drop people off in this isolated place to keep them away from everyone else. 
Leprosy has historically been stigmatized because it's a visible condition that causes the hands, feet, and face to become noticeably disfigured. This stigma persists in some parts of the world today, even though leprosy is curable thanks to modern medicine. So when people were taken to places like Petite Moustique and cut off from the rest of society, it wasn't just out of fear of pathogens spreading, but to keep those unfortunate souls out of sight and out of mind. Backyard Skeleton A homeowner in the Wellington, New Zealand suburb of Wadestown was recently taking care of her yard when she discovered a human skull buried less than a foot underground. It had no signs of trauma or decapitation around the time of death, despite being separated from the rest of the person's body. Police spoke with many experts who were able to trace the skull's origins back to a century ago. A former resident of the home told investigators he had discarded it, and a forensic examination verified it was a medical sample. Forensic anthropologist Dr. Angela Clark told the New Zealand Herald that it's impossible to perform reliable radiocarbon dating analysis on bones that are less than a century old. This is because of the radiation effects of atomic bomb testing during the 20th century. She said that it wasn't entirely unusual for someone to discover skulls that were used as medical specimens and turn them into her office. This leads her to believe that the person who buried it may have simply not known what else to do with it. As disturbing as it is to come across something like that, the motives aren't always sinister. It's been illegal in Wadestown for more than a century to bury people in graves outside cemeteries, according to historian Gabor Toth. He explained that any such burials required a special permit, that there weren't many, and this wasn't one of them. Someone probably happened to have it in their possession and simply wanted to get rid of it. Who would you call first if you found a skull in your yard? Let me know in the comments below! Persian Cup in Siberia While monitoring the melting permafrost on Siberia's Gadan Peninsula in 2016, a team of scientists discovered a fragment of a medieval bronze cup in Iran. It's the furthest north that a Persian artifact has ever been found in Siberia. This was the first time a discovery of its kind happened north of the Arctic Circle, according to researcher Andre Gusev, who spoke with the Siberian Times. In addition to the cup, the team unearthed a ceramic pot and a bronze knife handle. Researchers believe the cup was made sometime during the 10th or 11th century before being brought to Siberia around 200 years later. Found roughly 2,300 miles from where it was made, the artifact shows the vast trade networks that existed in a world where traveling took much longer in the absence of modern technology. Asian merchants appeared in modern-day Russia's Upper Kama region during the 6th and 7th centuries, according to scientist Dr. Arkady Baulo. They exchanged their wares for fur, walrus tusks, and hunting birds, which then made their way to Asia. Persian imports were highly valued among the indigenous Kanti and Mansi groups. They assigned ritual meaning to the objects, keeping them in holy places and offering them as gifts to their gods and spirits. They also used Persian dishes during festivals to serve ceremonial foods to the gods. Discoveries like this may become more common as the permafrost melts, and this is just one example of how the changing world is revealing ancient relics in places where we never expected to find them. A Whale in Vermont While building a railroad in the landlocked state of Vermont back in 1849, a crew of workers was shocked to find a beluga whale skeleton. At first, nobody could explain why or how the remains of an ocean-dwelling creature were discovered in a farmer's field in the small town of Charlotte, roughly 200 miles away from the nearest ocean shoreline. Known as the Charlotte Whale, it's one of several whale carcasses that have turned up in Vermont, leaving authorities, experts, and residents baffled. Lacking any other likely explanation, some people saw the discoveries as evidence of the biblical flood described in the Old Testament. But there was a logical conclusion in the works even before the Charlotte whale was discovered. Swiss geologist and Ice Age expert Louis Agassi was among the first scientists to realize that between 12,500 and 10,000 years ago, the Champlain Valley was submerged by a body of water. Known as the Champlain Sea, it was formed by surrounding glaciers, which pushed the ground to sea level under their enormous weight, allowing seawater to flood in. As the glaciers melted, the ground rose, and the Champlain Sea ceased to exist. Measuring 12 feet long, about the size of a car, the Charlotte whale is believed to be an adult, although its gender is unknown. While the bones are too damaged for radiocarbon dating, 
scientists believe the creature lived around 11,000 years ago. Prehistoric remains in downtown Miami While overseeing the demolition of a parking garage in downtown Miami last year, archaeologists discovered a collection of prehistoric artifacts, including human remains, bone fragments, and pottery shards. City archaeologist Adrian Espinosa Valdor said that one of the artifacts was a human skull that was found nearly six feet underground. He said that it was buried deliberately and believes that the objects are connected to the Tequesta Native American tribe that once lived in the area. While it may seem natural to think that archaeological sites and artifacts would have been uncovered before the city was filled with buildings, excavations weren't commonly carried out in the area until after the parking garage was built in 1972. Back then, it wasn't normal like it is now for archaeologists to investigate a site ahead of planned construction. Now it's required by law, and it's become clear through many discoveries that the area near the mouth of the Miami River saw a lot of activity during ancient times. These types of discoveries have created problems for Miami's developers in the past. They often have conflicts and legal battles with Native American groups and preservationists. Battles of this kind have also happened in New York and other cities where Native American historical sites have been discovered. Out of place mangrove trees Scientists were baffled when they learned mangrove trees happened to be growing and thriving about 200 kilometers inland on Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. Red mangrove trees grow in salt water and are typically only found near the ocean in tropical coastal habitats throughout the Americas. Locals have long known about the trees, but experts only learned about their existence relatively recently. Ever since then, they've been trying to figure out how the mangrove trees survived in a freshwater habitat. A team of researchers announced they believed they had come up with the answer after comparing the freshwater mangrove's DNA to samples from the nearest coastal mangrove populations. By examining the differences in the trees' genomes, they determined that the inland mangroves have been isolated in their freshwater environment for roughly 125,000 years. At that time, global temperatures and sea levels were much higher than they are today, leading scientists to believe that the area where the freshwater mangroves now sit was once a coastal region. When the climate cooled and the ocean receded, the trees managed to survive the transition by genetically adapting to the changing environment. It seems surprising that this is even possible, but the mangrove forest is home to several other species that survived extreme environmental changes. It's an extremely unique ecosystem filled with fish, turtles, plant life, and other life forms that were able to survive under vastly challenging circumstances. They did this while the type of habitat they had always known changed completely. Experts don't know how they did this and are continuing to study the site, hoping to learn more about their impressive resilience. A boat in the desert in 2016, a well-preserved boat was unearthed in the tomb of a high-ranking official in the ancient Egyptian necropolis of Abu Sir. It was remarkably well-preserved despite being 4,500 years old, with planks and ropes that were still intact, and it's one of just a handful of ancient Egyptian boats that were found in decent condition. Measuring 60 feet long, about the length of a bowling lane, the valuable cedar boat is an unusually large and lavish grave for a non-royal member of society, and it seems more than slightly out of place in the incredibly hot and dry desert environment. Abu Sir is near the Nile River, which the ancient Egyptians often used for transporting goods and people. Boats became increasingly important throughout the 4th dynasty for their role in international trade and were symbols of state power, according to Texas A&M University researcher Douglas Inglis. Burials in boats were fairly common at certain points during Egypt's Old Kingdom period. It's unknown whether the vessel found at Abu Sir was actually used for sailing. Experts don't know why the Egyptians practiced boat burials, but they believe that they may have been built to serve the dead in the afterlife or to carry their owners on the journey to the hereafter. Thracian Treasure Three brothers were working together at a Bulgarian tile factory in 1949 when they unearthed what they mistakenly thought were some brass instruments from the Romani gypsy culture. They were digging through clay together when they stumbled upon the collection of nine objects, not knowing that they had found actual treasure. Much to the brothers' surprise, an expert identified the items as 24 karat gold Thracian artifacts dating back to the 3rd or 4th century BC. Scholars believe the objects are a ceremonial set that belonged to King Sufis III, 
an ancient leader of mysterious origins who revolted against Macedonia shortly before Alexander the Great's death. The vessels are decorated with scenes from Thracian myths and culture. Four of the pieces are ritens, or ceremonial cups, shaped like the heads of animals and women, while two resemble deer and one takes the form of a ram's head. They represent some of the best-preserved Thracian artifacts ever discovered, as well as some of the most valuable, with a combined weight of 13.4 pounds in gold. The original treasure is the centerpiece of the Thracian art collection of the National Museum of History in Sofia. Secret Scottish Vaults The Edinburgh Vaults were built from 1785 to 1788 under the South Bridge in Edinburgh, Scotland. The South Bridge area was sprinkled with numerous prosperous companies with their workspaces below, and even further below were living quarters. The further you went down under the bridge, the lower your community rank. Life under the bridge was in continuous motion and change. Criminals moved illegal resources through the tunnels using a black market. There was a red light district with gambling places that popped up, bars and brothels were built, and crime and murder flourished. Historians say that at one point, serial killers could slaughter over 10 victims and hide the bodies in the vaults without being spotted or stopped. The surroundings in the vaults were so terrible that even the lowliest citizens were leaving the underground shanty towns between 1835 and 1875. The cellars were ultimately shut down and forgotten. In the 1980s, a bar owner and rugby player named Nori Rowan tried to help his Romanian colleague Christian Raducanu escape from the Romanian secret police and found a tunnel below his bar that led to the vaults. The discovery led to Raducanu's harrowing escape and the renewal of the vault's popularity. The tunnels and cavities were dug up and renovated. When crews discovered medicine, children's toys, and other common household items, they realized that the vaults were places where many unfortunate people lived. Today, the vaults are an important tourist attraction for visitors looking for the thrill of ghost town excursions. Ancient Roman Bust while shopping at a Goodwill thrift store in Austin, Texas in 2018, art collector Laura Young spotted a sculpture sitting beneath a table that cost $34.99. She bought it and soon noticed that it looked genuinely old, prompting her to wonder where it came from. She spent the next few years trying to trace its origins, consulting with experts at the University of Texas and at auction houses across the country. Sotheby's consultant, Jorg Dieterling, eventually identified the bust as an authentic Roman sculpture, dating back to some time between the late 1st century BC and the early 1st century AD. Experts from the German museum where it was once housed believe that it depicts the son of Pompey the Great, a high-ranking Roman general and statesman who was defeated by Julius Caesar. Others have speculated that the bust represents Roman commander Drusus Germanicus. The bust had belonged to King Ludwig I of Bavaria, who lived between 1786 and 1868, and it was part of a full-scale model he built of a Pompeii house in Germany. The model stood for nearly 200 years, but during World War II, it was severely damaged by bombings. Either way, it's been deemed authentic and has been identified as part of a sculpture that allegedly sustained significant damage during an Allied bombing campaign against Germany during World War II. How the bust made it from there to Austin is a mystery, but it's likely that an American soldier from Texas brought it home after being stationed in the region. That would make the most sense. It will be on display at the San Antonio Museum of Art until late May 2023, at which point it will be returned to Germany. Young received an unspecified finder's fee for her discovery, but she told USA Today that the experience was bittersweet since she wasn't able to keep or sell the bust. Roman Coin Hoard In September 2021, amateur archaeologist and metal detector enthusiast Daniel Luden discovered a clay pot filled with nearly 1,300 Roman coins dating back to the 4th century AD. He unearthed the hoard near the 13th century Wildenstein Castle in Switzerland, where he began digging up coins and clay fragments. Once he realized he had found something of historic value, Luden reburied the items and alerted local archaeologists, who praised the man's decision to take a hands-off approach and leave the investigating to the experts. I don't know how he was able to resist. They excavated the stash in a large earthen block and performed a CT scan, which revealed a strange layer of cowhide dividing the coins into two piles within the nine-inch tall pot. 
In the words of the researchers who examined the trove, it was filled with a large amount of small change, totaling the approximate value of a solidus coin, which was roughly the equivalent of a soldier's two-month salary at the time. Archaeologist Reto Martí told Life Science that there were two different kinds of coins in the pot. They were all minted during the reign of Constantine, which lasted from 306 to 337 AD. Unlike many other Roman coin hoards, which were often buried during a time of crisis, someone buried the money during a relatively peaceful period. It leaves archaeologists with two burning questions, including why someone hid it during a stable time within the empire and what the cowhide divider's purpose was. I want to give a big shout out to Marie Winterburn and Clay Jones. Thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe for more videos like these. Norway's first dinosaur. While digging for oil in the North Sea in 2006, workers unearthed Norway's first ever dinosaur fossil. They discovered it 7,400 feet below the seabed, also making it the deepest dinosaur fossil ever found. The creature was identified as a large herbivorous dinosaur called the Platosaurus, which grew up to 30 feet long and weighed as much as 4 tons. It lived between 210 and 195 million years ago at the end of the Triassic period in what is now Europe and Greenland. At the time, the North Sea didn't exist. The region was instead occupied by an alluvial plain formed by sediment from ancient bodies of water that no longer exists. Based on the fossil, the long-necked Platosaurus is believed to be the first dinosaur that evolved to eat plants that grew high off the ground. Researchers remarked that the odds of oil drillers discovering a dinosaur fossil are less than the chances of winning the lottery. But with the good comes the bad, namely that the fossil fragment was crushed by the drill, complicating the identification and analysis process for experts. Although it's the only dinosaur fossil ever found in Norway, Scientists don't necessarily believe that dinosaurs were rare in the region. They think that the area was a hotbed of dinosaur life and that there could be more fossil discoveries waiting to be made. If you found a dinosaur fossil, what would you do with it? Let me know in the comments! Revolutionary War Cannons While dredging the Savannah River last year as part of a $973 million project to deepen the city's busiest shipping canal, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers discovered an anchor, some old ship timber, and three five-foot-long cannons that they suspected of dating back to the Revolutionary War era. Researchers were quick to weigh in on the finds, suggesting that the cannons may have been used as ballast or tossed overboard. Based on their appearance and measurements, archaeologists and the British Royal Navy initially speculated that they may have come from a warship called the HMS Rose. The vessel was intentionally scuttled 250 years ago to block French ships from passing through the canal and aiding the colonists fighting against Britain. But records later disproved this theory after revealing that the HMS Rose was sunk further upriver. The Army Corps of Engineers found over a dozen more cannons in the Savannah River, bringing the total number to 19. Like the ones discovered last year, they are thought to be from the Revolutionary War, but their exact origins are still in question. The first three cannons were all found in a deep part of the river near an early 19th century fortification called Old Fort Jackson. The discovery prompted a search in other parts of the river for more cannons, which led to the latest find. They are in remarkably good condition and are believed to come from the British warships HMS Savannah and HMS Venus. The cannons are being kept in water to prevent them from deteriorating, while experts continue to search the area for evidence definitively linking them to the Revolutionary War. Over the years, the Savannah River has amassed treasures of other artifacts such as Native American pottery shards, a Civil War battleship sunk in 1864, and many items from other shipwrecks. Ancient Sarcophagi Early last year, workers at the Ramat Gan Safari Park in Israel discovered two 1,800-year-old limestone sarcophagi that had been unearthed 25 years earlier and then forgotten about. The original contractor who found them didn't understand what they were, according to the Israel Antiquities Authority. After initially being discovered during the construction of a parking lot, the sarcophagi were moved to another part of the property where they became reburied in sand and vegetation. When experts examined them last year, they found the caskets were made from locally sourced limestone and that they resembled the designs of marble sarcophagi that were found in Mara Mara, Turkey. 
They are adorned with flower garlands and discs, which were commonly used during Greek and Roman times as a symbol to protect the deceased in the afterlife. Based on the presence of these symbols, archaeologists have determined that the burials were not Jewish despite being found near the ancient Jewish city of B'nai Brak. It's unclear whether the sarcophagi are connected with the city. The precious finds have now been transferred to Israel's National Treasury Repository. B'nai Brak was the site of a seder mentioned in the Passover Haggadah and is said to be related to the Third Jewish Revolt against the Romans, led by Simon Bar Kokhba around 132. Researchers believe they belong to high-ranking members of society, maybe a husband and wife. At the time of the discovery, it was unclear whether the sarcophagi contained human remains as they awaited further study. Meanwhile, construction will continue on the new section of the animal hospital, which will provide veterinary services. That's nice. The world's northernmost island. During a research expedition in the Arctic last year, a team of researchers arrived at what they initially believed was Udak, an island that was discovered in 1978. But they soon realized that they were further north than they originally thought, and that they had discovered an entirely new island that nobody knew about. Many self-proclaimed island hunters were allegedly in disbelief when expedition leader Morton Rush posted photos of the newly discovered island on social media. Until then, Udak was officially considered the world's northernmost island. But that all changed when the researchers discovered the new island, which sits approximately 2,600 feet north of Udak. It wasn't discovered sooner because it was concealed by shifting pack ice. Ice or no ice, it's easy to understand why nobody previously noticed this teeny tiny landmass, which measures just 100 by 200 feet and is largely devoid of life, consisting mainly of silt and gravel mounds. Experts don't expect it to last for very long. Just one severe storm could wipe it off the map. The team doesn't think that climate change is responsible for revealing the island, which comes as good news in a world where the effects of global warming are becoming more and more noticeable. They propose naming it Kekertak Avanarlek, but it is Greenlandic for the northernmost island. Hidden Tudor Paintings While preparing to renovate the historic Calverley Old Hall in Yorkshire, England last year, inspectors discovered a collection of 15th century Tudor wall paintings dating back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. The artwork, which spans three walls, was uncovered in a very undistinguished little bedroom, in the words of landmark trust historian Caroline Stanford. Workers were peeling back some Victorian-era plaster behind a 1930s fireplace when they spotted the paintings, which were in a part of the house that had been overlooked back in the 1970s when they were painted over and labeled as unremarkable. At first, the inspectors noticed a mere smattering of color, but it was intriguing enough for them to take a closer look. Soon enough, they realized they were looking at swirls, birds with teeth, tiny men in hats, and other artistic depictions painted in a style known as grotesque work. It consisted of strange imagery that would be considered ugly by today's standards. But back then, it was all the rage, and it was even considered a sign of being educated and wealthy. It's rare to find Elizabethan artwork in such remarkably preserved condition, according to Stanford. The paintings were inspired by artwork that was found in the Roman Emperor Nero's Golden Villa, which was built around 64 AD in the heart of ancient Rome. A young man discovered the ancient residence in 1480 when he slipped and fell through a hole into the building. The designs inside soon became famous throughout Italy, England, Germany, and other parts of Europe. According to the last update, the Landmark Trust, a British nonprofit dedicated to saving historic buildings, was scrambling to secure the funding to preserve the fascinating artwork. Time is of the essence, especially since the Calverley Old Hall is considered to be one of England's most at-risk buildings. Massive Shark Die-Off Last year, a groundbreaking study revealed that there was a massive die-off of sharks around 19 million years ago. At the time, the world's oceans contained 10 times more sharks than they do today. Lead study author Elizabeth Seibert told SciTech Daily that she and her colleagues made the discovery almost by accident, while putting together an 85 million year record of shark and fish populations. They were aiming to simply get an idea of what the long-term variations in numbers looked like when they noticed that something drastic happened 19 million years ago. This was when about 70% of the world's shark population died. 
The death toll measured twice as high as the number of shark deaths during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs and 75% of life on Earth 66 million years ago. There are no known climate disasters or ecosystem disruptions that point toward a logical explanation for the die-off. Yet, while life seemed to carry on as usual for the rest of the world's creatures, its marine predators faced a steep and sudden decline. Study co-author Leah Rubin said that the findings could prove useful for understanding any dramatic declines in modern shark populations that may come. For example, it would be helpful to know if the catastrophic die-off caused surviving sharks to migrate elsewhere or to change their habitat entirely, perhaps by avoiding the open ocean. Experts can also potentially benefit from finding out why shark populations didn't rebound after the incident. Maybe there was another undetected global disturbance that caused a massive die-off. According to Yale researcher Pinselli Hull, who did not take part in the study, the findings represent a major change in ocean ecosystems that experts previously regarded also as unremarkable. Richard III It was in August of 1485 when the English ruler King Richard III fought valiantly in the Battle of Bosworth. But even though he fought well, he still lost his life during combat. He was killed and then buried by the Franciscan Holy Order, the Grey Friars, at their church. Over 500 years later, archaeologists with the University of Leicester and the Leicester City Council discovered his burial underneath a parking lot. All of these years went by and the king's bones had been buried right underneath where people were parking their cars. This was the parking lot for the city council workers and their office of social services. But hundreds of years ago, it was the graveyard of the Grey Friars Church. After the bones were discovered, they were analyzed for DNA, and that DNA was compared to the descendants of King Richard III. The DNA was a match. The carbon dating matched with his historical death, and the bones seemed to be from a man in his early 30s who had been brutally murdered in combat. There was no denying it. This was the skeleton of the king. Following the discovery, the king's body was reinterred at Leicester Cathedral, where he is on display for all to see. Mass Grave Under Irish Bar Evidence of a hyper-violent massacre has just been found in Ireland, underneath the floor of a pub. A mass grave was unearthed in 2021, under Nancy Spain's public house in Cork, with the bodies supposedly the victims of a prehistoric brawl or a slaughter that left their bones pulverized to dust. The skeletal remains were initially found thanks to the demolition of the pub. It was when workers knocked the walls down and started ripping out the foundations that they came across the skeletons. And while the media called it a mass grave, there were actually four men buried here, with two more bodies found nearby in shallow graves. They were all between the ages of 18 and 25 and had died a violent death. According to bone expert Neam Daly, they had their feet bound together and their hands tied behind their backs. They appeared to have been so severely beaten that many of their bones were smashed like chunks of ice being hit with a sledgehammer. We don't know who these men were, but historians do have a pretty good idea. Radiocarbon dating shows they lived in Cork sometime between 1447 to 1636. This would mean they could have been young men fighting in the revolt against the English, the Desmond Rebellions, or the Nine Years' War. They were almost definitely soldiers and had been captured and then brutally tortured before their remains were ditched underneath the pub. Anglo-Saxon Burial The decaying remains of over 140 people were just discovered alongside a busy English highway. It's called the HS2 and the skeleton bodies were dug up during road construction right alongside the pavement. It turned out to be an Anglo-Saxon burial site, and there is likely even more to it underneath the actual road. That means that people are driving over the grisly remains of their own ancestors every single day. Archaeologists didn't only find a graveyard full of bodies, they also identified a whole heap of artifacts. These Anglo-Saxons had been buried with their favorite objects, things like jewelry and knives. One of the corpses even had a personal grooming kit in his grave with him. According to historian Dan Snow, the site has revealed a set of stunning discoveries. The remains are from the Dark Ages, one of the creepiest and most desperate times in European history. 
These skeletons can help researchers learn more about what life was like for the English during these dark days. One of these skeletons belonged to a man who died between 17 and 24. He had a sharp iron object stuck in his vertebrae, suggesting he had been stabbed to death. Something was thrust into his body so hard that it got lodged in his spine. Clearly, these were violent times, but the Dark Ages wasn't all gloom and doom. Over 2,000 beads were found inside the graves, and 89 brooches. A brooch was used back then to hold up garments like cloaks and women's long robes. They may have been stabbing each other to death, but they still took the time to decorate their clothes and other personal belongings with colorful beads of amber and glass. The Buried Capital of the Aztecs Underneath Mexico City is the buried capital of the Aztecs, the once proud city of Tenochtitlan. In 1519, Hernán Cortés and 400 of his Spanish soldiers entered the city and realized they had come to a magical place. It was unlike anything they had ever seen in Europe before, what to them must have felt like walking through the gates of a new world. But it was also a place of great horror to the Spanish. When they began to explore the city, they found temples soaked in fresh human blood raw human hearts being burned in braziers, and a thick stench of death like nothing the Spanish had ever smelled before. According to the chronicler Bernal Díaz del Castillo, the interior of the city made him think of a Castilian slaughterhouse. Another thing that surprised the Spanish was just how populated the city was. Tenochtitlan was filled to the brim with people, more than the Spaniards had ever seen in Rome or even in Constantinople. It was truly an amazing place and then the Spanish destroyed it. They saw this blood and gore as demonic, and they could tell this city had to be torn down if they were going to conquer these people. And now, 500 years later, Mexico City stands on its broken bones. Mexico City was built on top of this paradise of sacrifice and exotic canals. Under just about every surface is a piece of the old city. For example, ancient structures have been found underneath tattoo parlors, parking lots, beneath the rubble of structures destroyed by an earthquake in 1985, and more. There is a great site underneath one of the subway stations near the historic center, and another site underneath the Metropolitan Cathedral. Whenever city workers move in to repave a street, they inevitably come upon ceramic shards, random artifacts, and pieces of old Aztec bones. Ancient Roman Floor An unbelievably well-preserved Roman floor has just been found hiding beneath the streets of London. In the capital of England, a floor decorated with a mosaic 1,500 years old was uncovered by archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology. It's unbelievable because the mosaic is still rich in color and looks as though it was made a few days ago, not 15 centuries ago. Even more shocking is that this ancient piece of history was discovered near the tallest building in the UK, the Shard, right in the middle of downtown. The floor dates back to the 2nd century AD and turned out to be the biggest unbroken section of Roman mosaic discovered in London for over 50 years. Site supervisor Antoinette Lertz called it a once-in-a-lifetime find. Archaeologists believe the floor was once part of an extremely large room, something we might compare to a lavish dining room in a large, stately manner. To the Romans, they called this room the Triclinium, and it was where they feasted. The building itself was likely a Roman hotel called a mansio, a place reserved strictly for wealthy Roman citizens. It would have had stables, luxury accommodation, and lavish dining. On top of this mosaic was where high-ranking officers in the Roman army would have taken their guests to drink wine and gorge themselves on food over a thousand years ago. The Victims of Waterloo 207 years ago, in the year 1815, one of the most epic battles in English history took place. Tens of thousands of men died during the Battle of Waterloo, which took place in modern Belgium. But what's always bothered archaeologists is that not very many of the victims have ever been found. We know where the battle took place, and yet almost no human remains have been discovered. There have been a few, like some random amputated legs and a man's skeleton discovered underneath the parking lot in the south of Brussels, but that's pretty much it. The most probable reason why so few remains are out there is a little disturbing. According to a news report from the London Observer in November of 1822, the soldiers who fought the nation's battle upon the continent of Europe 
were imported as an article of commerce to fatten her soil. In more modern English, the bodies of the dead were sent back to England to be used as fertilizer. While we don't have any real archaeological evidence that this happened, the report from 1822 and the blatant lack of bodies has been enough to convince most historians. Construction in Mexico Recent construction in Mexico has revealed a shocking archaeological site from over 1,000 years ago. This ancient site includes a graveyard as well as the remnants of a very old settlement. It was discovered in Mazatlán, Sinaloa during infrastructure work in the city. In fact, the initial remains were discovered when a pipe broke and suddenly workers were staring at a bunch of human bones. According to archaeologists with the National Institute of Anthropology and History, the settlement was once occupied by the Aztalan culture. Starting around the year 900, these people lived in the area around the northern Nayarit region and southern Sinaloa. This was most likely an important settlement to these ancient Mesoamericans, but archaeologists don't have a name or any kind of reference for it. What's interesting about this particular part of Mexico is that very few archaeological sites have been found, yet the existence of this settlement underneath the modern infrastructure shows that there was once an urban sprawl here. The remnants of the great cities and neighborhoods of the Aztalan are undoubtedly still hiding beneath Mexico's modern city streets. Treasure in the kitchen A vase sat in somebody's kitchen in the UK for many years. The people who owned this vase never thought much of it. It was just a fancy blue and gold vase that they could use for holding flowers. As it turns out, this was a very special vase from the 18th century that belonged to an emperor and it just sold at an auction for $1.8 million. This thing had been sitting in a kitchen like it was nothing but a magnet, and now the owners are filthy rich. Historians believe the vase was probably looted from a Chinese palace in the 19th century, then somehow found its way into this house. All we really know is that it came into possession of a man who didn't know its worth, and he passed it on to his son after he died. His son put it in his kitchen and left it there ever since the 1990s. Based on one of the symbols found on the vase, it was originally the property of the sixth emperor of the Qing dynasty, the very last imperial dynasty. He was called simply the Qianlong Emperor and ruled all of China from between 1735 and 1795. The color of the vase itself is a shade of blue called sacrificial blue. It gets its name because the same color decorates many parts of the Temple of Heaven in Beijing. It was at this temple where the emperor used to make sacrifices to ensure a good harvest in the coming season. Forgotten section of Hadrian's Wall Underneath a busy street in the United Kingdom, a previously undiscovered piece of Hadrian's Wall was just found. It happened during work on a water main in the northeastern city of Newcastle. In case you don't know what Hadrian's Wall is, I'll quickly explain. The wall was constructed on the orders of Emperor Hadrian 1900 years ago. At the time, Rome occupied all of Britain except north of where this wall was built. Beyond the wall were the roaming tribes of people the Romans considered to be barbarians. They never could conquer that northern land, and so they built the wall as a barrier to mark the edge of their vast empire. The wall was completed in the year 128 AD, and it stretched 73 miles across northern England. This newly discovered piece is about 9.8 feet long, made of massive blocks of stone. This makes experts believe it was probably one of the first pieces installed, since most of the wall is made of small stones. Of course, historians already knew that the wall went through their city. Still, it's always exciting when they find a new chunk of it hiding in a random place, like under a city or beneath the foundation of someone's house. It's amazing because the wall had originally been built on flat land, yet somehow the land rose enough that it was totally buried under the street. Graveyard under the street In the city of Larnaca, Cyprus, workers just discovered an ancient cemetery hiding underneath the street. It was discovered while city workers were going about completing an anti-flood project to protect the city from future climate disaster. When they dug the street up, they discovered a graveyard dating back to the 12th century BC that was used all the way until the days of the Roman Empire. A total of 10 graves were found, but even more cool stuff has been found in other parts of the city. 
Because this anti-flooding project is so huge, requiring massive drainage pipes to be installed all throughout Larnaca, there has been a lot of digging going on. And according to Polina Krisofi, a local archaeologist, numerous discoveries have been made. This newest discovery appears to be a piece of an ancient necropolis from the days when the city was called Kition. And in the surrounding area, over 60 other tombs have been found, many of which are thousands of years old. Whose tombs are these, you ask? Well, the ancient city of Kition was established in the 13th century BC by Greek settlers following the end of the Trojan War. That means the people buried here are probably ancient Greeks. Another interesting fact about Kidion is that it had one famous residence, a man named Zeno of Citium. In 334 BC, he founded the Stoic School of Philosophy, which still remains alive to this day. Thanks for watching! What kind of treasures do you think are hidden under your own city streets? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!